Okay, hello everyone. This is Dr. David Ajibadi with the Brain and Body Foundation, and this is your health in your hand. And we hand our hands. <laughs> Come it. All right, scratch that, folks. I'm gonna uh, we're gonna start again. I'm talking to my 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 editor. I'm talking to the, the producer and editor. Okay. <clears throat> I haven't done this in a while. Well, hello. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Ajibade with the Brain and Body Foundation, and this is your health in your hands. Thank you for joining us. We have a very special guest today because we're going to be talking about mental health, the emotional, the emotional and cognitive consequences of COVID-19. And it's been going on now, believe it or not, it's over a year now that uh, we first heard about this, this, this terrible disease. And I've been in the States now for a few months and pretty much everybody I've met has had COVID-19, pretty much everybody. And I've traveled all over from the East Coast to West Coast. And I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma now. So uh, a lot of people have had it and a lot of people are still suffering from the, shall we call them side effects or the lingering effects of this disease. And it's just important that people understand that this is not just a physical disease. It affects the mind, it affects emotions, and we talk about the laws of life. We talk about how the mind affects the body and how the body affects the mind. So it's important. I think this is an opportunity for us to really um, take hold of the principles that govern mental health. And, and even before that, take it more seriously. To take the fact that our mental health is important. Just as your cardiovascular health is important, just as your lung, your um, kidney health, where well, we talk about diabetes a lot, all these things are important. And I know we Nigerians, we tend to say, oh, it's, 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 it's gotta be okay, God's gonna take control. But I think this experience with the pandemic has shown that we need to be more serious about our health. And thank God, it's not as serious in Nigeria and Africa as it is in the US. But at the same time, we don't want to play with our fate. We want to take, let's take this opportunity to be more serious about our health. And without, I've said a lot, without, Further ado, I'm going to introduce a good friend that I've met virtually and who is absolutely passionate about mental health. And she is a clinical psychologist herself. She's going to tell you more just how great she is in a few minutes. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be talking about the mental health consequences of COVID-19 and what you can do about it. So without much ado, Dr. Nikisha Hammond, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. We are glad to have you on too. And you've been so passionate about talking about mental health and I hope people have been listening. But I'm just going to say, let's start the ball rolling by talking about you and where you fitting in all this whole picture. Yeah, yeah. Thanks again so much for having me. And so I'm a psychologist, as you mentioned, and an author, a speaker, and I do a lot of media consults. And to your point, we talked a lot, especially in 2020, about mental health. I talked to a lot of, of news outlets about mental health and, and its effect from COVID and what it's done. Um, so it's, it's been an absolute honor to do that. I have a private practice myself um, where I'm at part of the time, I'm still seeing patients currently, especially mm -hmm. children. In teens, ADHD, learning disabilities. Um, I specialize in evaluations, also with adults as well, um, but primarily children. And um, and it's been about twelve years now um, since I've been in practice. So honored to be here today. Wow, that's great. So this you've been in practice twelve years now. Has this last year? How has this last year been different from the other eleven years? It's been, you know. So I've spoken to so many individuals. And people have really struggled, mostly anecdotally, um, the people I've seen with anxiety and with fear and so much fear, mm -hmm. loss. Um, so fear of getting COVID, fear of what that means, fear of what happens if I lose my job, what happens to my family. A lot of fear and anxiety is what I've seen uh, this past year. So how, how do people, this is this COVID-19 and the effects are here to stay. Mm -hmm. How do people, I mean, how do you, when, you, when you're dealing with it, how, what are some of the principles that you can share with us to help people combat this fear and yeah. anxiety? Yeah, well, first of all, just so people understand fear and anxiety, especially in a global pandemic, 
is normal. Uh, first of all, uh, one of the things that I addressed with people is mindfulness and self-care is critical. This has to be number one in your life. It cannot be on the back burner. It can't be something you'll do here and there, especially right now going through this. Self-care has to be number one for you. If you are listening to this and you're taking care of someone, it still has to be number one priority for you because that makes you a better uh, you know, someone that's better to take care of the other people in your life. So that is something I preach so much uh, over this past year is the self-care. And if self-care at home is not enough, it is critical to get to a mental health professional. If the anxiety is to the point where it is really affecting your functioning, you can't go to school, work, be a parent, grandparent, or sister, brother, whatever role you serve it's critical to get mental health help as well. All right, so I'm gonna jump in then and say, we Nigerians don't have that kind of access. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, even if we do have access to statistics show we tend not <laughs> to consult or be seen to be consulting with a mental health professional. Mm -hmm. What can such people do or what can we do under such circumstances? Because we still need to develop, are there tools? In other words, are there tools? Yeah. Are there, you said you mentioned mindfulness. Yeah. What can people do? And, and again, we're going to go back into some of, again, we really want to highlight how, how dangerous mm -hmm. not taking control of your mental health is. And so, I mean, yes. you know, we talked about some statistics and how this is affecting both the U.S. and the rest of the country, the rest of the world, mm -hmm. excuse me. But yeah. we, we, I'm hoping we can, we can leave with the tools. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so one of the things, so when I say mental health help that comes any different forms. Um, it may come in the form of counseling or not. So it also can come in the form of um, getting tools, like, I mean, such as, you know, your program or listening to information that is uh, focused on mental health. When it comes to mindfulness, one of the best things about mindfulness is it's something that every single person can do. It's free. It doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, mindfulness is literally taking some time to live in the present moment. That means whatever you do on a daily basis, you're not even, you don't even have to add an extra time. So when you wake up in the morning, whatever your routine is, if it's brushing your teeth, if it's getting ready, if it's washing a dish, whatever it is that you are doing in those moments, practice paying attention to every single step. Because most of the time we are thinking about what we have to do that day, what happened the day before, what we have to do, who we have to call, all these sorts of things. But if you really truly practice being in the present moment, it gives your mind a slight temporary relief from the anxiety, from the depression, from the worry, all of that. Um, and, and you can increase that time period. I mean, start out with a couple minutes a day and try to increase that time period. But it's literally something that does not, again, it's free. I, I do it myself. I like my cup of tea and just to take a couple minutes of calm. And it really, really makes a difference when you add those types of practices in your life. So that would include not just uh, wash, brushing, thinking about, in other words, you're shutting yourself out away from the yes. daily grind and concerns about the daily grind and all the activities and the concerns of the day to yes. go into a, a special place? Could this be, I mean, some people talk about meditation, some people talk about studying the, the Bible or the Quran yes. or a religious book. Is that what we're talking yes. about? Yes, absolutely. Yes, okay. I love meditation too, to your point. Um, but yes, so the example, I love giving this example. I think I've given it a lot of times on interviews here, but like brushing your teeth, for example, if you literally, you, you have to be conscious of it because most of us do it automatically. But when you pick up the toothbrush, your brain goes to, okay, I'm picking up the toothbrush. I'm putting the toothpaste on the toothbrush. I'm putting it under the water. Every step your brain starts to think about and be in that moment, which, you know, again, is only a couple minutes here, hopefully. We're not taking 20 minutes to brush our teeth, just a small amount of time. And it really, really can make a difference for your mental health. Okay. We're going to take a short break now, and then we're going to talk about the, the, the impact of this COVID-19. All right. Yeah. So folks, we will be right back. Don't go away. Awesome. Cool. I think we've did about uh, 10 minutes 
or less audio attendance. So we have about uh, 10, 10. Okay. So we, so this is 5.30 now, so that'll be 5.50, 5.50 on the dot, and that's when you have to run away. Anyway, we'll have to run. Okay, so what do you want us to talk about? Now, we're going to talk about statistics, right? Do you have, do you have the statistics with you? Uh, yes, yeah, I have a, yeah. Well, the US ones I have. Okay. Well, hold on. Uh, I have the WHO statistics they did among 130 studies. Okay, I have some global ones too. Okay. Global ones, yeah, that would be, make more sense. Okay, so let's start with the global ones. Okay, and, then... and I have the ones for youth. Sorry? No, I was just saying I have the ones um, for youth. For youth, good. Is that global as well? Yeah, it's from the WHO, yep. Okay, so let's talk about the global ones and then and then from there, which, of the, which one do you want to speak on first? Suicide, depression, anxiety, which one? Uh, this one. Now this one is, okay, so around three quarters. Okay, this is about the partial disruptions in school and work workplace mental health services. So about 78%, 75%. Um, they're they're kind of, they did, the global one they did is more general. So like 30% uh, reported disruptions to access for care, um, disruptions to mental health services. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's a little more general. Not necessarily like per disorder they did, but this one is more, like the disruptions that people experience with school, mental health services, that sort of thing. That's the global study. Okay. You know about that or? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, okay. Yeah, it needs to be, people need to hear that, I think. Okay, so we're gonna talk about, so what, is that what you wanna talk about after the effect on school? I, I wanna go with what, yes. what fires you up the most, Akisha. The kids. <laughs> so, so that, I wanna be sure that that's the most important ones are treated. Yeah, the kids, the kids for sure. You want to treat about the kids, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. I'm gonna get back into it. And then after the kids, what was the next one? Um that you want to talk about. What does the next one on the list? Probably I can do the general depression, anxiety, grief, trauma type of thing, how that's affected, like people adjusting to this and what that looks like. Okay. Um, is that do, do you do anything with regards to um, physical abuse? Um, uh, what you call it now? Uh, domestic violence? Do you, do you don't do that at all? Not, not really. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Here. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. So for children and then the, the trauma and grief will get good. I just want to use it. That's fine. Cool. All right. We're going to get back right back into it. Oh, I didn't pause the recording. That's okay. They will just edit that out. Okay. Okay, welcome back, folks. I'm here with Dr. Nakisha Hammond, who's a clinical psychologist who works a lot with children, but adults as well. And so, Doc, let's, how is this thing affecting people worldwide in terms of mental health? Yeah, yeah. So the, the WHO, they did a, a study, a survey uh, with about 130 countries throughout the world. And they found that three quarters of, of kids were really disrupted with their, you know, with their schooling, uh, which we know has some pretty profound impact on children's mental health. Uh, so much happened over the past year when it came to events that were canceled for kids. Many kids were taken out of their traditional, what they, for them, was their traditional school environment thrown into all sorts of different circumstances. Um, there's a, a huge difference in the resources throughout the world for kids going to school and not going to school. So it's really had an impact, unfortunately, on kids increasing their anxiety, more kids having learning issues, behavior issues, problems with attention. So it's really been pervasive, I would say, um, on children's mental health, unfortunately. Is there any long-term consequences? I mean, I know that it's yeah. they're being cut out of school now, but what do you think? Well, how does this affect them in the future if this goes on long enough? I think it's long enough. One year is long enough, but yeah. Know. Well, and that's the thing. You know, yeah, that's a great question. By the way, um, the thing is, for some kids, this more or less will affect them for this time period. 
for some kids, especially that were predisposed to depression or anxiety and other types of issues, this could last for years, them dealing with this mentally and understanding what all this means, depending on what happened in their family. Did your family lose their job? Did your family, did you experience a death in the family because of COVID? Did you have COVID? There's so many different factors. And again, some kids thrive. Some kids are going to be fine. And then there's a large group of kids that are really going to struggle emotionally. Some kids have been very traumatized by this, a lot of trauma and see what's happening around them, seeing what's happening in the world. It's a lot for kids to absorb um, for the younger crowd. Um, so it's been, it's, it's been difficult, but this is going to be very long-term for some kids, definitely. Yeah, because part of the child's form, f formation and the development, the emotional and, and psychological development, it probably depends a lot on that interaction. Yes. That's fighting or playing or arguing, whatever it is with other kids mm -hmm. in the class or with the teacher, interacting with mm -hmm. the teacher. And once that's taken away, I, I, I really feel something is lost. It is, it is. And they've done studies on that as well to just show, uh, to your point, the isolation and what mm -hmm can do for certain kids, very difficult, and adults too. Um, the isolation has been one of the things that they've studied a lot with, uh, you know, with mental health and how that contributes even more to sad mood and the anxiety, um, you know, unfortunately yeah. for some people, suicide and self-harm. Suicide, exactly, so that's nothing we want to talk about. But even, mm -hmm. even then, I mean, so this thing, we talk about the mind and the body, this thing, from what I see in my studies too, you, it, it translates eventually Loneliness, isolation uh, can translate to to actual physical consequences on the heart and on the brain, yes. which can be long term, yes. uh, mm -hmm. set you up for even major events in the future, like strokes and, uh, of course, heart attacks. So it's, it's it's not something to be sneezing at all for sure. No. Yeah, I wish. Okay. Anyway, so how about with regards to suicide? I think you mentioned that this, this mm -hmm. that's gone up too, right? Did you did you read? They, did you read? Yeah, they. They're seeing different things in the research, but as of last summer, they did see, summer 2020, they did see an increase um, in some suicides. The current thing, it kind of changes depending on what study, uh, but nonetheless, there are more individuals abusing alcohol or turning to self-harm type of behaviors because it is, it's so difficult to manage. To your point earlier, depending on mental health resources, that's very different throughout the world and what's available. Uh, depending on the education of what is needed, what does depression even look like? What does anxiety even look like? Um, can affect people and the choices they make to cope with this loss, this fear, um, and, and this you know challenging time. Right, right. So so, so much to be done. Okay. It's a lot. <laughs> It, it, it is a lot. And uh, yeah, before I forget, you need to give us some some resources that people. Who don't have access to people like you can probably hopefully get something online that they can access access to. In fact, why don't we do that now? Do you have any resources you can point people to? Yes, I love um, helpguide.org. Help guide. Yeah, help help. H e l p. Yep, helpguide.org. U i d e dot. Mm -hmm. Dot org. O r g. Okay. Yeah, I really like that site because. They have so much info. They well, they have a specific information, uh, specific information surrounding COVID, um, and what to do as far as mental health. But they they have everything on there: depression, anxiety, ADHD, learning issues, bipolar disorder. I mean, the whole uh, list of different types of mental health concerns. What yeah. you can do at home, um, or if you know you you need medication or mental health services, um, all of that is on there. So it's a, it's a really great site. I would highly recommend that. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that's really helpful. Okay. Yeah. Um, any, any other ones? Um, like I would also one. say, I'd also say the American Psychological Association, which is APA.org. APA.org. Okay. A really great site. And NAMI, um, National Alliance on Mental Illness, NAMI, is also a really great resource as well. NAMI.org? Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, folks, you, you got some good resources there. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. All right, we're gonna take a short break now and we'll be back soon. Don't go away, bye. All right, so we talked about suicide. 
depression, anxiety. We talked about that. We want to talk about trauma and oh, trauma and, loss, yes. Trauma, trauma and grief. Those who have yeah. seen the parents or their loved ones go through this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Have you had to deal with any of those? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, la- was it last weekend? I don't even know the days are blurring. So last weekend, my husband actually was, unfortunate, and my son were diagnosed with COVID. Oh, um, no. I was away for like the week before when they both got sick on a business trip. So when I came back, I found out I, I tested negative and I retested and I'm ne- so yes, I have, unfortunately I have experience of, of what that looked like in my house. Well, obviously I had to quarantine them both. And yeah, that was very stressful, of course. Um, but as far as grief, yes. Also last year I lost someone, not to COVID, but the trying to deal with COVID and that's something I want to talk about with people, but trying to deal with COVID and all of that brings and you're also dealing with your personal life is very overwhelming um especially grief um there's someone very close to me so yeah it, it's it's horrible actually um but i just want to remind people though that because we got so sucked into thinking about covid that we like there's still your personal life going on that you have yeah. to process for mental health and this so sometimes so we have- i chose one or the other so we have about 10 minutes to okay yes 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 We'll deal with that so be sure you really express what you what you want people to know to know about okay For all sure. right and we are back with dr nakisha hammond talking about covid 19 and mental health so doc let's talk about grief is it, is it trauma and grief for those who have actually gone through it and those the caregivers who are are dealing with the issue and i know you mentioned caregiving the caregivers at the beginning but let's let's talk about your experience you, you probably have had patients you've had to deal with and help but let's talk about that i think uh real quick in nigeria here we've been fortunate in that we haven't had that many deaths proportionately mm-hmm. uh and of course there's been uh, it's certainly underreported because of course we don't we don't have as uh, sophisticated measuring instruments as the u.s does but mm-hmm. certainly there have been a lot who have who have lost loved ones as a result of COVID-19. They may be watching this program now. They may be dealing with grief and trauma. How, what's, what's your take on this? I want, to, I want you to really talk to them about this. Yeah. Um, so grief, grief is very difficult, uh, of course. Um, what I would say to that though, is to really remember that this experience COVID-19, this global pandemic um, is happening. So many people have, or you may have yourself been kind of sucked into the information to processing what's going on with that, to making all these life changes related to that. But at the same time, you also have your personal life that you have to deal with that has not stopped just because a global pandemic came around. So it's really critical as much as possible to make sure that you're paying attention to your mental health and understanding, especially when it comes to grief, it's really important not to sweep it under the rug, not to pretend something didn't happen, not to say, oh, I don't wanna think about it, but really try to work on managing that grief, feeling those emotions, very important. I know for myself also losing someone close, very close to me last year, difficult in the midst of COVID-19 era, very difficult, still difficult uh, when it comes to grief. But but I just encourage people to take care of yourself, give yourself grace and patience during this time. Um, Depending on who you are, sometimes depending on who you lost, maybe sometimes grief can, the healing can occur in a couple of months, sometimes it's a couple of years, and sometimes it's decades. And there's no perfect timing. So I also want to remind people of that, but it's so important. I can't stress enough for you to take care of yourselves during this time. This is a very critical time, more critical, I think, than ever to take care of yourself when it comes to your mental health. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with more. So other than mindfulness, what are the other things that you feel people need to prioritize when when taking care of themselves? Yeah, I I think you really need to prioritize uh, making sure that 
you're surrounding yourself with individuals and with things or hobbies or whatnot that you enjoy, that uplift you, people that support you. Not everyone, unfortunately, you know, is supportive necessarily in the world, but there, hopefully you have a group of individuals that support you, that you can talk to, that you can process what's going on with you. Um, as well as, I mean, to your point earlier, which you mentioned, taking care of your physical body as well. Whatever that looks like for you in whatever form, movement, very important. You don't have to, you know, I don't know. It, there's different types of movement. So some yeah, people- Exercise, exercise. and-, and Yeah, some people like yeah, vigorous yeah. exercise and some people like taking, you know, short walks, yeah. whatever it is for you, but some type yeah. of exercise because that also helps your mental health. I like to also emphasize to people that, and, and people are the most tired of saying, maybe saying this, but especially if you're black, you need you need supplements. Yes. People turn it, uh, people they turn their noses up on supplements, but I'm telling you, this could save your life, especially Correct. when we talk about vitamin D, zinc, and vitamin C. These are things that are extremely safe once you take yes. the, the recommended doses, and it's better for you to have a little more than not to have enough because you need these to fight against not just uh, protect you against uh, disease, but help you to fight better against disease. And also, we have mental health as well. Vitamin D is important. Zinc is important. Vitamin C is important. Magnesium is important. Those are things that help to deal with the stress. I mean, when that stress begins to affect your brain, it, it actually does physically affect your brain. And, yes. you need to be able to, and you need to be able to combat that by strengthening uh, your body, strengthening your brain and your mind and all those things. So yes, mindfulness, meditation, go to church, go to the mosque, make sure you have that spiritual aspect taken care of, yes. but also have the physical aspect taken care of because they both work hand in hand. What do you think, Doc? I totally agree. I couldn't agree more. And I think I think that you you really need to, when it comes to mental health, you need to think of whatever your self-care routine, your mindfulness, meditation, or spirituality and all those things, think about making a commitment to, to bringing that into your life because it's not just during this time, during COVID or quote unquote difficult, challenging times that you need to be thinking about your mental health. This needs to be a part of your life so that one year from now, three years, five years from now, whatever challenges come into your life, you are mentally able to handle them. You can manage the emotions that will come up related to whatever life throws at you. That's what true self-care and mental health awareness is. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that because I think that's really important. How about those who've lost, who've lost people from, from the disease? Yeah, it's, it's so hard. It's so difficult right now because depending on where, depending on different beliefs related to loss, it can be difficult. I would highly, highly recommend that you find that group that you can process that loss with, um, process that grief of losing someone with, um, as well as do what you need to do to honor that person, whatever that looks like for you. Um, the, 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 <laughs> it's, grief is hard, I, I think it's very difficult, but I think the one good thing is that you always have the memories of that person with you, that's something that can never be taken away. You'll all have that for the rest of your life. So concentrate on those positive memories you had with that person um, and just really remember to, to, you know, to process this, this loss with others around you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for, for, for saying that. People need to have, they need to enjoy the memories of the people that they've, they've loved and who have gone. Uh, so if any f final, final thoughts about, about this whole thing? I mean, do you, have you had your, uh, I was going to say, have you, have you had your vaccine? But I think I know the answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> still waiting. <laughs> it's it's a, still, still waiting for that, right? It's still, yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah. We're waiting on things to get sorted out in our state. I'll, I'll say it as that. But, um, but no, final things I want to remind people of there, especially when it comes sometimes to the news and the information that you hear, you can hear a lot of doom and gloom and the world's I, over. Yeah, I think that you just shut those TVs down, quite frankly. Right. Take a break. Take a break if you need to from all the negative energy, negative information coming at you. 
focus on you, focus on making sure you're mentally and physically well, <laughs> surround yourself with positivity, whatever that looks like, um, and, and realize there really is hope. There, there really is hope, hope is still there. And here I am on, on a TV station saying same people to shut, should shut TVs down. I just, I was like, oops. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I was referring primarily to news and the gospel, the, the gossip sessions, sections and all the other stuff that's all about politics and how it's a scam, and the, the conspiracy theories. I mean, those things can drive you up. Yeah, just enough, so. take a break. <laughs> take yeah, a break. Take a break from, from all those yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goodness gracious. All right, folks, uh, we've been on the show with Dr. Nakisha Hammond, who's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant in talking to us about the effects of COVID-19 on our mental health and what you, me, everyone can do about it uh, so that we don't become statistics. I mean, this is, this is for the long haul, folks. The lessons we learn here, we should be able to carry them and hold on to them for the rest of our lives because these are principles, whether it's COVID-19 or whether it's another pandemic or whether it's a nuclear war, these principles remain pillars, the, 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 the foundational principles, mental health, mindfulness, exercise, uh, relationship with, with family and friends, work, you know, cognitive, exercising your brain, all those things are absolutely, no matter what happens, you kind of keep on doing those things. And the better you do these things, the more, the stronger you will be, the more you will have a defense uh, resilience and the ability, you have a greater ability to bounce back than those yeah. who just sail through life without really taking, taking to heart these principles. So please, I hope you uh, take them to heart and continue to watch your health in your hands. And by the way, Dr. Hammond, please tell us how they can reach you about that. Yes, so I am on, I think, almost all me social media platforms, but uh, the easiest way to reach me is on my website, drnakeshahammond.com, or again, on any social media platform. I'm more than happy to answer any questions or get anyone resources that they need. Awesome. Awesome. And you guys heard that. Okay, thank you so much for coming on, and I'm hoping we can get you on sometime in the near future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You bet. All right, folks. See you again next week. Remember to stay safe. God bless. Bye.